Well, good morning. We're uh, I'm putting in this old fence, you know, putting it back up. Look, it's working. Keeping the cattle out there instead of in my build site. But it's a couple, uh, well, three or four football fields long. That is a long time to walk without any breaks in the wire, right? I need a gate to pass through. So let's go ahead and talk about gates today. <clears throat> this is a modern gate and I really enjoy it. I think it looks top notch. As cattle slowly eat the grass up out here, they're going to put more and more pressure on the, the gates down here to get through. And that's a little pack of bulls right there. Well, I see some females in there. All right, so uh, you can see that that's a long, long way down. <laughs> a long, long way down. Still a long, long way down. Long, long way down. All right, so we need to get some gates in there. Let's take a look at the one that I'm working on now. We'll walk through my formal outdoor kitchen that has all of the accoutrement into the uh, Spanish Hacienda courtyard with the fountain. Oh, look at the swim pool. Oh, man, with a grotto. And look over here, a whole bunch of uh, adobe-style walls with a cool arch bell on it. It just comes right through the pasture, right through here. Into the woods from the main courtyard, right through a field of sunflowers. And there you find a garden gate. Pretty little garden gate sitting there. If you leave it and you exit, you'll go right out to the pond. In addition, look over here. Well, this is interesting. I say it's a fallen Spanish throne. And I'm gonna put that back in the ground with a seat. Right there by the garden gate. That little garden gate has a live post and a not live post. Let's get an overhead piece set up there for y'all. Look what I found. That already has an arch in it. This ought to make a good little door lintel. Let's try it out. Well, I'll be. That was definitely made for it. Look, it's got a little room here for a bird feeder to hang. Maybe a little wind chime even. Comes down in a little W, like my last name, West. Well, I like that. Well, let's go ahead and get some screws in that. And then I'll put some, right there, I'll put some bar header T-bars at the top of those. That ought to stabilize all that, so that gate ought to just stay right there. This particular post isn't really in there very good yet, because uh, the ground is so powdery right now. It's been a drought. All right, I'm just eyeballing. I'm not being real fancy here. I'm just looking at the angle. A bit more. All right. Far we can get in that old post. Even though these are old looking posts, once you get through the, the weathering and the oxidation, they're still as fresh as they ever were on the inside. What's rotting is the uh, sapwood, you know, and not the hardwood part of it.
see any. Well, hello everybody. How y'all doing? Doing good. Oh, the little calves are so cute. Uh, don't let me run you off, guys. You just stay put. I'm not after you. I'm after the gate. I want to finish this gate. Get this fence up. So you guys stay on this side. Alright. A new day. I got the saws all sharpened and the axes sharpened and repaired. Everything's ready. I like this little garden gate. I'm really digging it. Alright. Let me get all set up here. Well, continuing on with the farmer build, right? Uh, I could buy hinges and pay for them. Or I could just, I've got some old rebar in here that's already got a bend. Cut them out and uh, use those for hinges. So I'm going to use the those old rebar for hinges. The last few weeks I've been uh, stretching wire and rebuilding fence. And I've got a different way of doing it today. So the other time I used the wire stretch, it was from an end piece that was cut off. And then I stretched it along the fence. This is a middle section here. That's all loose and wobbly. So what I'm going to do instead is just use a hook and just pull into it like that and pull it tight as far as it'll go. There's a couple of logs that need to be replaced. I'm going to cut out all the cedar that's underneath the old oak trees to make posts. So that's how I'm going to do that. So the other end of the chain I'm putting on my uh, four-wheeler. I'm just going to back up an inch or two, foot or so, I don't know, whatever it'll take, whatever it'll give me. And then I'll check it. And then you see that it's pulling the wire up to the gate. The gate kind of comes out a little bit. Uh, and that's because this, this tree grew out a little bit. So the, uh, the cedar grow around fence rows because uh, the birds eat the little ju ju uh, juniper berries and then sit on a wire and then poop and then you get a cedar growing along. I would plant cedar all along an existing fence and grow my own post and 20 years replace them. All right, let's do this thing. Right. There we go. Uh, that stretched the fence just like I wanted. All the way where I left off. You see, uh, it's growing around some of the trees trees have grown into the fence and so when I get to those spots that's where the tension will stop right <laughs> you know like right here this tree it's it's grown into this wire so no sense me pulling that wire any further what I did to tighten that you'll see that I just put a uh, a cut stick in there and wrapped it around and used the post in the thing kind of as a barrier that'll also keep people from uh, trying to climb on the wires there. I might do something better there, but right now I've got cattle just eyeballing me Just dying to get through this fence and ruin my life. That's what cattle do. They ruin your life I don't know how anybody makes money ranching anymore. I Just don't don't see it. I Think you'd have to have a hundred head of cattle to make thirty thousand dollars even a lot of work under a head of cattle. I don't know. Well, I don't know much about cattle anymore. They're expensive. That's all I know. All right, let's nail these up. You all saw that I pulled that pretty tight. Same process as always. I just used these staples and I just uh, put nail staples along the edge. I'm going to put it on stop motion. I'm going to shoot me from where it starts and just go down as far as it gets tight. Now that wanted a, that didn't pull the full quarter mile fence, right? That just pulled a hundred, maybe 200 feet if I got lucky. There's a broken post in there and certainly anywhere where a tree grew over it, it stopped, the tension stopped there. So, but let me go ahead and set that up. There's also a wind out today, so uh, it's probably hard to hear me in the audio.
All right, I pulled the wire tight 50 feet on either side. That feels good. Wherever there was a tree growing into it, that's where I used as an end point. As you saw, I just threw a, a chain with a hook on it over it, backed the four-wheeler up and pulled it out of the middle. Well, we're working on the, on the gate right now. This is what I need. I need to get in there and cut some logs so I wanna be able to come back and forth in and out of the, the fence. For those of you who haven't used the wire fen uh, pliers before, fence pliers, they've got little notches in there that if you line up, it'll just shear your um, <clears throat> wire right off. So that's what I'm doing there. Well, after fussing around for entirely too long trying to make those rebar joints uh, hinges work, they didn't work. Uh, <clears throat> went and bought uh, for seven bucks each, uh, fourteen dollars. Different size hinges. Uh, there's one set, and then I bought the next size up. So the next time I have that idea, I could just put them up. I have some hinges around here too, but I'm saving them big hinges for my gate, but. This looks like the right size for a garden gate. The biggest problem with these is the, the hinges would pinch there and then they would widen the hinges and then eventually it just fall off. So. Oh, he's eyeballing me. <laughs> he's been eyeballing me the whole time. He's just a young one. He's probably just curious. But I don't like a ball behind me, you know. You never know when they want to prove their boss.
Well, I guess I should keep track of cost versus cost, right? So there's 200 foot of fence that I did with the gate. And you know, if you ask somebody to put a gate in, it's, it's gonna be every bit of $300, probably closer to 400. Uh, Restretched the barbed wire, hung the gate. I like it. Uh, my hinge idea out of uh, rebar didn't work at all, so I didn't save any money on that. So $14 is what this part of the gate cost me. These pipes were already here. That log was here. This log was here. So, <clears throat> all right. Well, now I need to cut some logs and uh, get uh, some the missing post here. So. There we go. I'm a garden gate. I enjoy this thing. I enjoy the entire vibe of it. The little header with the W kind of log there. Eventually I hung a chime there or a bird feeder or something. I like the old timey vibe of this. I'll go ahead and put a little latch there that'll catch it. Maybe just a staple for now will do it. And uh, looks good. This part of the fence looks pretty good. I got it all fixed up. See, uh, I, for the uh, top strand, I want to pull tighter, but I'll, I'll get to that after I finish doing all of this. So, all right, wonderful, good. All right, so that concludes my little garden gate. I have found material. It cost me 14 bucks. The only thing that uh, I ended up buying for it was the the proper hinges. I tried to use rebar. I'll put in a few minutes of that. It, it did not work for me, but I went ahead and reinforced it with a couple of tie post into uh, the existing fence and logs. Basically, I want this to be uh, strong enough that if somebody sees it as a gate, they don't lean on it and break it open. Put a little head post on it with, in the form of a W. I'll hang some bird feeders off of that, as I mentioned. That'll be great. I went ahead for now. I'm using the spring-loaded opening with just a couple of staples in there as the strike. Down there, there's a natural knot. That's a strike point. Oh, there you go. And that cuts uh, that in about a quarter. So I have a gate at the opening, the main go opening. And then uh, this is a full football field length down. And I have another gate. And that gate, you can't really tell. There's a pond just right there. So I can come through the, the gate here and found materials, like I said, and uh, go visit the pond. And then this, uh, where my horse trailer is, this will be uh, the back end of my uh, backyard, which will be a Mexican hacienda style with a fountain and a pool. And uh, right here, I'm going to do a field of sunflowers. So you'll walk through a field of sunflowers. This will have adobe style walls around it, uh, kind of like um, the Alamo or something, um, but they'll be stuccoed and they won't be high. They'll be clearly... Uh, agricultural <laughs> so as I uh, do this work I also uh, save all of the cedar for coyote fence so it takes me a little while to get everything done there's the work where I uh, removed all the cedar from underneath here I do have a widow maker hung up in the tree so today I'll have to work on that <clears throat> I'll get some wedges in here and, and start working on it I was hoping the wind would blow it down in the middle of the night, but it didn't. So that's the last one that I have to cut out of here. I, I might get a pole saw too and just try to cut those branches out that are entangling it. That might be enough. We'll see. So now I need to go down another football field or so and put in another opening. And uh, that'll be my work today. You see how thick the uh, that side they cleared, but the brush on this side uh, is super thick. Uh, I do have a pathway all the way through there, so that feels good. But this wraps up my garden gates, and you know uh, it feels good to harvest uh, materials right from your own property. All of this was just found material, except those hinges, which I had to get. Um, if I had a welder, I probably could have welded up hinges myself. I needed a better angle and I need a little collar on it and I couldn't do that with the rebar so I had to buy them but they were only seven bucks a piece so um, anyway it does feel good to harvest everything and take care of it this way so I encourage everybody it's a lot of hard work <laughs> but I encourage you on your own homestead go ahead and harvest what you have use what you have especially if it's cedar that's a very good wood <laughs>